What's up guys? I promised you I'd update you on how my half ukulele, half guitar is going from the champagne box. Not very well. It's far more hideous than I thought it would be at this point. I literally had to use a sawed apart clipboard as the bridge and some broken chopsticks as our frets. My next job is going to be to paint it, put the bolt screw tuning pegs in, and string it up. And we're going to see if I can make this Frankenstein work. Until then, let's get dinner started. So today I want to experiment with some of the experience I got working over in Thailand and Burma. So what we're going to be making is a Southeast Asian lettuce wrap filled with steamed rice, a monkfish red curry, and a fresh tricolored carrot, radish, and peanut marinated salad. This one's going to be a little trickier than my past episodes, but I think it's going to make for a wonderful watch. Let's go check out the ingredients. We have kola beta roasted garlic olive oil, organic red wine vinegar, and a fish sauce, but the fish sauce is optional. For our spices, we have basic table salt and pepper, turmeric, cayenne, and ground cumin. We're gonna be using an awesome brand of red Thai curry paste called Mike's Organic Curry Love and one can of coconut milk. We're gonna need some white rice and about half a cup of peanuts. So our fresh ingredients are actually really cool. We start with these two kind of oddly shaped red onions, but then we have this fantastic supply of organically grown lettuce, rainbow potatoes, tri-colored carrots, and radishes. All of this brought to us by a company called the Chef's Garden Home Delivery by Farmer Lee Jones. If you haven't seen our past episode, we received an incredible supply of some of the finest produce I've personally ever seen. Especially during quarantine times, I would highly recommend you take advantage of this company. They're not just fresh, they're quality. Now, last but not least, we have these awesome fillets of monkfish from a company called Citarella, which have a great delivery service going on as well. Okay, enough talk. Let's get started. First things first is to get that rice started. Don't forget to salt it. And while that gets cooking, we're gonna begin our prep. In my experience with cooking a monkfish curry, a lot of onions necessary to balance out that fishy flavor. So we have all our pep items mixed together in here, our carrots, radishes, and our peanuts ground into that fine dust. We're gonna start marinating it so it has time to absorb all those flavors while we work on our curry. We're gonna start with some olive oil, add a couple splashes of red wine vinegar, and in our case, we're gonna splash a little bit of this fish sauce in, but if you don't like fish sauce, just add a little extra vinegar. Now we have some salt, some pepper, and with very clean hands, we're gonna give that a mix up. So our rice is cooking, our prep is done, and our salad's marinating. It's the perfect time to break for a fitness segment. I know this is one of our more low-calorie meals, but personally, I'm still working off those nachos from episode nine. So here to help is Golden Gloves champion, professional MMA fighter, and yoga instructor, Gabriella Golfin. Take a look. Hey y'all, what's up? I got just the thing for you to work off those nachos, Rita. Everybody knows the common fighting stance and boxing with the jab cross, yeah? But let's spice some things up with Simple jab, step out with the cross, place my right foot where my left foot was, throw the cross from the south cross stance, left knee, and then hook. One, two, three, four, back. All right. Second step jab, click, spin off the ball of my left foot, and turn. All right, y'all. Yeah. Thanks for moving with me. Of course, normally you'd be using a sushi rice for something like this, but we didn't have it, so we used our normal white rice. We overcooked it a little bit on purpose to make it nice and sticky. We're gonna let that cool as we get our curry done. Also, the two of us normally don't live in one place for long, so another thing we're lacking is equipment. So normally I would never make a curry in a wok, but in this case, we're gonna make it work. We're gonna start heating some of our garlic oil. Now the oil is nice and hot. We're gonna start putting out those onions really coating them nicely in that oil. Once those onions begin to become translucent and have sweated out, we're gonna start adding our fish and potatoes. The potatoes are cut very small, so they're gonna cook very quickly. Right before we add in that fish, I'm gonna put in this really great red curry paste. 
Now this monkfish is gonna cook very quickly, so it's only gonna take a moment before we add that coconut milk. Make sure you get everything coated evenly with that thick paste. And, and it goes. Coconut milk is immediately starting to take to that color. So now we can see it bubbling, and I mean, it's really aromatic. I wish you could smell it. It's like you can smell the heat, all the spices, but we're gonna kick it up a notch even further. We're gonna add a dose of cumin, an extra half spoon of cayenne, and a bit of turmeric for a little extra color. So most brands of pre-made curry paste are already very salty, but the organic one we chose needs a little extra seasoning, so I'm gonna put in some salt, but that's up to you. So we're almost reduced down to that creamy texture that we're looking for, and it's really important to let that rice cool totally, because if it's too hot, the second it hits the lettuce, it'll wilt. So while we wait a few moments, I'd like to reintroduce our new segment in other news. Hopefully it brings you some articles that'll make you smile. See you in a minute. Good evening, my name's Henry Lyon, and today we're gonna to be doing some videos. Right, so let's go to Manhattan, where Zoom marriages have legally just become available. Which also means that Zoom divorces will be following shortly after. Right, moving on to a bakery in Helsinki that is now creating novelty toilet paper cakes. My only concern with this is I wonder what's gonna happen once they realize it's not actually toilet paper. Anyway, moving on. We're going to Tiny Town, right? Local authorities are informing residents to please put their pants on before leaving the household. They've been getting several complaints and giving out warning to those who are not. Residents of Tiny Town, please put your pants on before you go fetch your mail. Right, back to you, chef. So normally for a Southeast Asian lettuce wrap, you'd be using bigger and stronger lettuce, but this is so gorgeous, and I think that it'll work just fine. It'll just be little baby wraps. Take the strongest and the longest leaves you can find. If you're at home, if you have something like romaine, that'll work really well. So now you wanna work with where they're naturally curving towards you. So let's take this big guy first. Take just a small amount of rice, smaller than you think you need depending on the leaf size, and that'll keep it safe from the heat that's about to come from your curry. And take a little bit of your marinated salad, which has a really nice nutty, acidy flavor, and put that just like that. You can kind of pat it down to make it long and give that lettuce space to wrap right around it. Now, once you have it folded lengthwise like that, you can take the tail, you might hear a bit of a crack, but that's okay. Wrap it right up. Then if you're not gonna eat it right away, you can take a toothpick, if you're doing it for a party or something like that, shove it right through. So now I've just drizzled it with olive oil and we're adding some really pretty edible flowers just for a pop of color. So this is probably the most floral dish I've made in a long time since I worked upstate. I love how edible flowers can brighten up dishes so quickly and so easily. So as you can see, some of them I overstuffed a little bit. You don't have to do it that much. It's gonna get pretty messy trying to eat it, but I mean, if you're at home and no one's watching, no harm, no foul. All right, let's see. Oh, that's great. Even though the lettuce is a very delicate breed, it still has that crunch, and the peanuts make it even crunchier. It's spicy, the red curry is spicy, but I always go spicy. So this is awesome. It's good as a snack, it's good as a meal, especially if you're dieting, like I'm trying to do. And the produce, like I said, from Chef's Garden is unbelievable. So another cool thing is that monkfish is actually more commonly used in curries than you would think, uh, because it has a certain aspect to it. When it co cooks down in that coconut milk, it becomes very creamy and it contrasts really well with things, especially things like peanuts or like ribs of the lettuce and stuff like that. So if you can get your hands on monkfish, give it a shot with that. Or else, be creative. Do it with whatever you want. But I would suggest using a curry, yellow, green, or red. I'm really excited about it. I could probably eat the whole plate, but I'm gonna be nice and let my wife have some of it. Okay guys, thank you so much for joining us for episode 11. Can't wait to see you for 12. In the description, we did put the website for the Chef's Garden delivery system, as well as Cinderella, if you're interested. If you like Gabriella Golfin, she does host Zoom yoga classes. Feel free to contact her through the social media outlet to my left or down below. If you like us, please follow us on Instagram and hit that subscribe button. I hope everyone's staying safe, happy, and healthy. And as for me, I will see you next time. Thank you.
beautiful, fresh. If I say beautiful again, I'm gonna lose my mind. You're already losing your mind. Salad. Fresh tri colored carrot, radish, fia, salad. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that toothpick? Oops, fell out. Then we use as the bridge, and then we use broken up chopsticks and have to be out. <laughs> Splinter. <laughs>